Well, vignetting is the limiting of light, usually near the edges of a picture, although you can also have vignetting from an obscuration in the middle of an image, which is the case with Cassegrain type telescopes. There are four different varieties of vignetting. There's optical vignetting, mechanical vignetting, natural vignetting, and pixel vignetting, and I'm going to go over every one of them. What you see in vignetting is darkened regions in images. Sometimes those darkenings are done deliberately by photographers for artistic reasons, such as this picture of the bride and the groom, where the edges of the image are darkened, and a lot of extra light reaches the center in order to bring attention to the bride and the groom about to kiss. And the bottom image uses vignetting to bring attention to the misty field by darkening the edges, and you're looking at that shiny mist. Optical vignetting is a result of some, but not all, of the light from the object not making it to the image. In this case, I have an extended object, and I'll consider a part of the object on the optical axis, that's the red dot here, and the tip of the object, and we'll look at the light rays coming from each of those parts and see how they compare out on the image. So let's first look at the axial point, where I have two marginal rays. Those are the rays that pass through the extreme far reaches of the optical system. They're limited by the aperture stop. In this case, if you ask yourself, well, what's the aperture stop here? I think you'll realize it's that front lens, because it's the front lens that limits how much light gets into the system. That makes it the aperture stop. You can't have a ray at a larger angle than what's labeled here as marginal rays. It will miss the lens. Now proceed to the tip of the object and look at a bundle of rays that come from it and subtend the same angle as the rays that came from the axial point. Those rays reach the lenses and you realize one of them misses it. One of these rays that should be going through the lens if you're sending as much light from the tip of the object as you did from the axial point is heading out into space and is lost. The bundle of rays that comes from the tip of the object and actually makes it to the image is smaller than the bundle of rays that came from the axial point. And that's what optical vignetting is. So that's all you're left with from the tip of the object, less light fewer photons. You can expect then that you're going to have dimming of the image out at the tip. I'm going to rename what I'm calling the marginal rays then, because marginal ray means the most extreme ray that actually makes it through. I'm also going to have to rename what I'm calling the chief ray, because the chief ray is in the middle of the bundle. So follow a ray in the middle of the bundle that actually gets through and see where it crosses the optical axis. At that point, you have an aperture stop that the tip of the object seems to think is there. So if you ask a point on the axis where's the aperture stop, in its opinion, it's the first lens. If you ask a point at the edge of the object where is the aperture stop, in its opinion, it's right where I just drew it. And the size is the size as shown here because the aperture stop is what limits the amount of light that gets in. So if you have an aperture stop right here, that's the size because that's the size of the ray bundle that's passing through that point. It's not a real physical thing. It's an imaginary aperture stop. It's the aperture stop that determines how much light makes it to the image. It's that second lens that's responsible for that vignetting, but the second lens is not the effective aperture stop because that's not where the chief ray is crossing the optical axis. So that's the effect of ray bundles. Even though light is coming from the tip of the object, less of it is arriving at the image. Fewer photons, it's going to be dimmer at the edge of the image. You know, that's not what a field stop does. It might be easy to confuse this effective aperture stop for a field stop. A field stop limits the angle that light can come from, but it's the aperture stop that limits how much light is coming from that angle. And so this is an effective aperture stop. The vignetting can be minimized by making that second lens larger. Or if you don't have the liberty of doing that, if you made the aperture stop smaller, and that's this fourth bullet point, a smaller aperture will minimize the amount of optical vignetting. A smaller aperture will not change the field. So how much object makes it to the image is not affected by the size of the aperture stop. So a one-step solution 
to minimizing vignetting is to make the aperture smaller, make that front lens smaller, and then you won't have vignetting. What you will have is a slower lens that is a larger F number because you made the entrance pupil diameter smaller. It takes longer to collect light on the image, but it will be more evenly distributed. A design solution used in photographic lenses is to place a physical iris at the location of the effective aperture stop and making it adjustable so that the photographer has some control over the vignetting, ranging from having significant vignetting to being able to equalize the image irradiance at all fields. Mechanical vignetting is an actual blocking of the light entering the camera, and usually it's an external object like a filter that's been attached to the front lens or an external hood or some other external component. So that the image looks like, well, like this picture down here where apparently some round thing was put at the entrance. And that's what mechanical vignetting is. It's something that is avoided and usually should be avoided. I don't think this is very artistic, but unless it really is what you want to see. Natural vignetting is a result of the roll-off that happens with angle. That is, when a ray bundle is incident on the image sensor, and the image sensor is at the far right end of this design. Effectively, the brightness of the image at that point will depend on the cosine to the fourth of the angle that that ray bundle is making with the surface normal. That angle is zero at the midpoint of the image, and as you get out to the outer extremes of the image, that angle has grown to something. So the image is going to be dimmer by a cosine to the fourth of that angle. You can imagine that a longer effective focal length will minimize that problem by rendering these rays more parallel. So the closer you get to actually being in a telecentric condition, the less natural vignetting is going to be an issue. Finally, there's a vignetting that occurs as a result of how pixels are arranged. So the active area of a pixel is usually sunk into a well, and that creates a shadowing when the light arrives at an angle. So much like natural vignetting, where you lose image brightness because of the angle of approach that the light makes with the sensor, this is also that situation. The larger the angle of, of approach that the light is making to the sensor, the more light that's not going to get onto the sensor. This is less of a problem when there are micro lenses on the pixels. This is also something that can be resolved in post-processing because it's a known effect of each pixel and the pixel's location on the focal plane array.